Nimona was one of those movies that I completely missed when it was first released, but my friends urged me to watch it. And you know what? I'm glad they did because boy is it worth the watch. I love the art style and the character designs an unreasonable amount. Especially Nimona, I mean, just look at her. The shading, the shapes? It's 3D yet it looks like an art style straight out of a comic. It's just awesome. And now you might be thinking, Oh, but Will, if you like their design so much, then why does this redesign video exist? Well, my dear children, I am an artist and I can keep my claws to myself. Alas, I could not stop myself from trying to come up with my own designs for these characters and forcing you guys to watch it. Super quick recap for those of you who haven't seen the movie. Basically, Ballister, the guy I'm drawing right now, is accused of murdering the queen on the day of his knighting ceremony. Nimona, who is an undercover shape-shifting creature feared by the whole city, kingdom, queendom, doesn't matter. But she finds Ballister and basically adopts him as her quote-unquote villain boss. And together they try to prove Ballister's innocence. The setting of the movie is a paradoxical mix of medieval aesthetics and futuristic designs, which somehow ends up looking awesome together. Anyway, for my redesign, I decided to put the characters into our world because I'm not trying to make the original designs better, but rather recreate them in a new light altogether. For Ballister, he is literally in full armor the whole movie, so I was debating what the equivalent of this would be in our world. First of all, I think we can all agree that the knights in the movie basically represent the police, so I made him a police officer. As for the armor, what immediately came to my mind was these whole body outfits the police wear at protests, which are apparently called anti-riot suits. I found that to be very fitting because the knights in the movie are not really protecting the people from an outside threat, but rather changes in the system that go against the grain of the ruling class. Now that's something to think about. I probably put way too much research into Ballister's outfit because I looked up all the things that go on police belts, only to end up with a pose that hides all of them. But yeah, he's carrying a gun instead of the sword he has in the movie, he has a taser on his chest and some magazines on the other side of his belt. I really tried to get his face right because Ballister has such a cute, lovable puppy face. It's not even funny. Like his whole thing is that he's supposed to look like a typical villain, dressed in all dark with a scar through his eyebrow. But then he has the most adorable face that reflects his personality so well. He's the definition of a baby girl and you cannot prove me wrong. As for the second pose, I decided the poor guy needed a break from the full armor, so I gave him a hoodie and a trench coat instead. AKA the least suspicious clothing ever when your face is plastered on wanted posters all over the city. Also, I wanted to show off his robotic arm here. I imagine in this version of the story, he lost his right arm after it was shot at rather than severed, and since he was considered a criminal at this point, he couldn't just go to a hospital to get it fixed up, so he had to amputate it himself. Which is kinda dark, but we like dark, so we vibe. Sucks for him though. Moving on to the colors. I mostly stuck to his original dark gray color scheme, but I just had to add in some red as well just so it's not all grey. For this redesign video, I basically swore to spend less time shading the characters than for my Gravity Falls redesign video. But um, yeah, my perfectionism keeps getting the better of me. And that's a flaw I'm trying to work on. I'm honestly kind of impressed with how I shaded the metal parts of this armor though. They turned out actually really cool looking. The close-up looks amazing too, and the shading on it is satisfying as hell. It just looks like you can touch it. You just want to grab him. And his face looks just the right amount of baby. Moving on to the real star of the show, Nimona herself. I tried to have her personality shine through in her poses. The standing pose is a more confident, I'm here, I'm queer kind of vibe, while the close-up is more gremlin. You will see later. I was kind of surprised looking at Nimona's hair in the show, because in my head it looked a lot less flat. So I gave her more spiky hair. In my opinion, this fits her way too well. It really shows her flamboyant energy and looks like she never quite sits still, so her hair is all over the place. As for the outfit, I stuck pretty close to the original, 
Though I debated for a while if I should give her a skirt with a crop top or a dress. I did settle on the layered dress situation later. She's also wearing a jacket and boots. I mainly added the jacket for some additional interest. And also because I thought about it having cool patterns on it. Then I gave her a spike choker, spikes on her boots, ear piercings, and bell chains for the metal factor. I do not know how or why I came up with the zippers on the dress, but honestly it's a pretty fun idea so I incorporated those into the rest of the design as well. For the close-up I obviously had to show off her crazy side. I love that they gave her different kinds of teeth for different occasions in the movie and that they made her grin unnaturally wide. Because of course she would. I would too if I were a shapeshifter. But alas, I am just a simple raptor. Ayo, feet for free? Ahem, <clears throat> anyways. Her close-up pose is basically her rubbing her hands together and grinning like she's just come up with the perfect plan along the lines of chaos, destruction, something, 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 we win! I also felt like something was off with her face in the close-up until I realized I essentially gave her my haircut and totally forgot the funky side hair floof thingies she has. Thankfully, she looked a lot more herself afterwards. For her colors, I don't think I changed too much. It's mainly some vibrant pink, a little bit of purplish pink, and then brown. I really wanted her to have some kind of pattern happening on her jacket, so I very roughly sketched on some of the animals she shapeshifted into. I do have to mention though, one of the few things I did not like about the movie was that all of her animal forms were just completely pink, with the exception being the human form she takes on. It just seems like an odd limitation to me. But then again, I could totally imagine her going, I like pink, and I also like these animals, so I will become this animal, but in pink. And with the shading done, this is how she turned out. I really love the vibrant colors in this one, especially after Ballister's mostly grey design. Before we move on to the last character, the best way to sell me your so- <clears throat> I mean, let me know you've enjoyed the video so far, is to leave a like. Anyways, let's just continue. So I bet you all were thinking, We'll redesign the Mona and Ballister. Surely that means Ambrosius is next. Wrong! While Ambrosius is definitely a cool character as well, I had my eyes set on another character already. The director. I do not know what it is, but her face is so shapely. She's also the antagonist of the story, and if you know me, you know I love me some villains. So in contrast to Nimona and Ballister, I gave her a fairly symmetrical pose to show off her orderly and controlling manner. I also wanted to have her weird staff thingy in the pose, and my original idea was for it to be some kind of walking stick. It doesn't look very comfortable to use though, since I ended up making both ends kind of sharp. Maybe it's not a walking stick and it's actually a concealed weapon like it is in the show. Who knows? If you do know, you probably no longer live to tell the tale. I really wanted her face to have a similar vibe to her movie model, and I think I pulled it off pretty well in my style. The pouty lip is everything to me. She looks so serious and annoyed, it's perfect. As for the clothing, I debated what someone like her would wear in our world. Her original clothes basically don't reveal skin anywhere but the face, and she also has this iconic veil that I really wanted to keep. What I love about the OG look is that she doesn't look like a villain at all. She looks like a frail royal lady, which is a huge contrast to her personality. She takes things into her own hands, willing to kill people even though she's sworn to protect in order to achieve her ideal future. And while she doesn't physically fight anyone, she does absolutely fight with words, which is almost more powerful in a way. Back to the design. I decided I wanted to give her some kind of suit, but I also loved the silhouette of her dress in the original design. So I tried to give her a long suit jacket with pants, but eventually ended up with a dress that had the top half of a suit jacket instead. I think this made the design lose some of the frailty and gave it more of a business heavy look, but I still think it works well. And then of course I gave her the iconic veil. I wanted the second pose to be symmetrical as well, but I didn't want to have her head be front facing for variety's sake. Actually I kinda didn't manage to draw the face straight on a second time, but uh shh. I also struggled trying to place the hands correctly, but they ended up looking cool in the end. For the color scheme, I think you can tell I really stuck close to all of the original designs this time. But they also look awesome, so there wasn't much I wanted to change about them. I did go in and add some diamond patterns to her dress, since it did look a bit empty otherwise. 
Side note, these drawings took me probably a month to make because I had a burnout break in between. So yeah. This channel is a learning experience for me, less on how to make content but rather on how to work with my brain. This is also why I had a bit less to say about these characters than in my previous video, just because there were several weeks in between me starting to work on Ballister and finishing up the director. That being said, if you guys would like to stay up to date with what I'm currently working on, I do have a Discord server that's meant for sharing art and making friends. There's notification rules for when I upload new videos or open commissions, and I also share exclusive whips of my projects there. So if that sounds good to you, come join us! Back to the drawing. During the shading stages, I defined the director's facial features, as well as the folds on the clothing, which tends to make everything look a bit more satisfying. Especially with the golden lapels of the suit dress, they look nice and shiny. Some might even call them... edible. I'd certainly eat them. The director is definitely the character I changed the most out of the three. She went into a different direction than her OG design, but it still suits her well in my opinion. Overall, I'm super happy with how all of these came out. You can tell they're still close to the original since the color schemes are almost identical, but they definitely belong more into our time period. If you'd like to see more character designs made by me, check out these Gravity Falls redesigns. Or if you've already seen that video, check out my character design playlist. I added some older design videos that are from my other channel to it as well. Thank you guys for watching, special thanks to the people who've made this amazing fan art, and that's all for today, we'll out.